Hello and welcome back for season four of... Actually, we have a way better intro this time. We have a special intro recorded by none other than Jacob Yamato Canon MD. Yamato, take it away. Euphoria with Frauskuren and Dracos. Available now on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, and Spotify. Nailed it. Thank you, Yamato Canon, for that one. Uh, a bet updates before we get anything. I'm Dracos Frauskuren, as Yamato just mentioned. Uh, Quick Shot's tattoo is happening. He picked a Naruto frog. I'm a weeb, so I think it looks pretty cool, so I'm kind of sad. I was really hoping you'd get a really stupid frog. Uh, um, it's still a stupid frog. <laughs> there you go. Non-weebs will still think it's dumb, which is really all we can ask for. Uh, he's not on wall shame because the, the bed is just in planning. We're trying to figure out how we're going to film it and uh, when you can find time in an appropriate tattoo artist. Realistically, I think one of us should have just given him the tattoo because that's way funnier, but it's very unhygienic and we're not trained, so I understandable why he wouldn't want to do that. Uh, cosplay bet with... Uh, Yankos and, Dracos. and Mickey, they beat us. And uh, I'm going to be honest, we weren't prepared uh, with costumes, but we're getting them made. So post Rift Rivals, I'm on the wall shame, folks, because this is my bad. Uh, I'll be on the wall shame, and I deserve to be until after Rift Rivals. I'll put a picture up there shortly. Um, post Rift Rivals, we will have our costumes. And I have confirmed from our broadcast producers that we will get some airtime. I'm hoping we can <laughs> cast all of our games. In our respective, I will be Evelyn. Frostgrown will be Akali. KDA cosplays. Uh, so do not worry. I hope you're doing your planks. Our embarrassment. No, yeah, I've got. I gained a bunch of weight in an A, being nocturnal. So get ready for a little, little bit of a gut on the old Evelyn. <laughs> not to, not to ruin anyone's uh, fantasies there, but it's going to be a, a little Gragas Evelyn hybrid uh, I'm here. I'm pretty sure that that uh, we don't king shame here. I'm pretty sure that hits a, a certain <laughs> demographic. <laughs> It's gonna be a uh, bear Evelyn. It'll be uh, it'll be interesting. Otter Evelyn, maybe, um, if I'm lucky. Anyway, here we go. The most important thing, ladies and gentlemen, that you want to hear us talk about inevitably is the greatest thing that has happened in European history. Wait, that, what happened? Well, if you missed it, ba, ba, da, ba. we won MSI. That's right, MSI trophy. It's right here. Be careful, we brought it's it. heavy. It's so heavy. It's we earned it. Uh, and Froskern, I would just like to give a shout out to all the EU fans who supported G2, uh, all the haters who fueled their ambition. Because really, it feels great to be the best region in the world. And there's this is two-pronged because it feels great to be good. And more importantly, it feels three things, actually. It feels really good to be better than NA, XD, <laughs> throw our crowns on. And the third, and the thing that I'm enjoying the most right now is being better than Korea. So pretentious Ooh. LCK fans, Eat your hearts out. How oh you my doing, God. OG and Legion? Where's your excuses now? There oh, wasn't good. Samsung to bail Griffin. you out. Ooh. Uh, mm. SKT the, tastes the good. The tears of, of, of the fans is, is just the sweetest, sweetest nectar. Um, yeah, so we're fantastic now. That's kind of how that works. We're going to be really egotistical from now on when it comes to international rankings. Um, and we're going to live in this joy. I think by the time Worlds comes around, we'll come back down to Earth if you're looking for more balanced analysis of how tournaments will actually go. But until then, Europe's the best. Uh, and just generally, yeah. I don't know. No, mm -hmm. that, that covered it. Anything else you want to add? Do you want to kiss the trophy? Yes, I do. Mm. Mm. Get really close ASMR. Ooh. Like, then you want to kiss the trophy? We'll kiss one at a time. Yeah. That that's the trophy. We'll leave it right there in the middle. Um, Only winners get to trust touch and, the trophy. Yeah. Now that the the free tournament of MSI is over, we get to start talking about the greatest league in the world, which is the League of Legends European Championship or LEC. For that's the short. first time you've ever gotten that correct. It took me literally an entire season to not mess it up, so it had to happen eventually. Um, anyway, we're 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 here today to talk about top, top twenty. 20. We've, now there, are, wait. There are some rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, uh, well, there's a lot of things. You, you explain the the criteria here, so people don't get confused. Because we agreed on a criteria. You can use a different one if you want to make your own twenty top twenty list. But this is the one that we agreed on. Take it away. From yeah. Us, if you'd like to follow along at home, the idea is is we base it off of world's top twenty. So this isn't about who is going to be the best at the end of summer. This is about who is the best right now. Now that means that a lot of the analysis and um, statistical work that we did is coming from spring split. Yep. And so I don't know about your list because our lists are secret from each other. Yeah. We've had a couple of arguments already in the office, um, but my list does not feature any new players coming into the LEC. So I don't have anyone like Larson or anything like that. I have one new player. He's got one. And in the process of our discussions on the way in, I realized I forgot a player. <laughs> 
So um, you can feel free to shame me, internet, for this because I forgot I'm actually a very talented player, and so I've actually just very aggressively cut him, cut another player out Hilariously, to put this player though, in. We submitted our list early, so Yamato Cannon could record it to yeah, keep yeah. us honest. So I believe the recording still says your original list. Yeah, and now I'm gonna have to edit it on the fly, and I'm just gonna have to do a pretend Yamato voice when we get. And it's funny because he forgot one of Yamato's players. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I swear to God, I did the necessary research for this, even if I may have we forgotten. We did the player. actually try very hard on our lists. I know we talked a lot to Ender, Vettius, Deficio. Deficio is great, by the way. His no, feedback consists of it's awful. Why or, is it Nuke Duck number one? Did he say that to you too? Yes, he said. Why is it? He said if Nuke Duck's not in your top three, you're trolling. Oh my God. Well, Nuke Duck's not in the top three. Spoiler alert. Okay, so today for this list, we will be starting uh, in one and going to twenty. In the past, we've. You've you've seen our tier list discussions, and essentially we've like we spent start a, from the like back. forty minutes <laughs> talking about Rogue, yeah. and then like we get to G two at the end, and we have five minutes. And we're like, they're great, <laughs> S tier, woo! Oh, I do have some fun facts on my list, though. Speaking of G two, so here are the fun facts about my top twenty. Um, the most represented role on my list isn't mid lane. In fact, when we were putting together all of the mid laners, I was like, wow, EU mid, that doesn't exist anymore. Like waiting for no. those guys to come out of the woodwork. It was actually the ADCs, which I think was reflective of the LEC 2019 spring, yeah, and that a lot sure. of our bot lanes got so much stronger. Um, there's only one team on my list that has all five players. I'll let you guess. <laughs> 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 two teams have four players, Origin and Fnatic, uh, and then Splice and Vitality have two teams. The only teams not represented at all on my list are Excel and Rogue, so shout out to Kadrill and Expects. Yeah, rip, missed the mark. Um, reminder that earlier this week, there was a poll going out where you could vote for your top five role uh, players in each of their respective positions. We have results in front of us for that, and we will be comparing with that public pooling. Check out Law Esports if you want more information on how this worked out, because some of this stuff is pretty XD, y'all. I'm I just don't... saying, don't throw stones from glass houses, guys, when you look at our list, because there's some boosted shit on this. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes democracy does not give you what you want. That's, that's, all, that's all I'm going to say. Um, but at, unsurprisingly, on the on the public polling, G2 players are first in literally every role. Um, but it gets much more XD from there. Anyway, let's get into it, Proskurin. We have a whiteboard behind us. Yep. We each need to write our first player. Wait, I think it gets announced first by Sir Yamato Cannon. Okay. So, uh, Yamato, please announce Dracos and I's first. Dracos, first place. Wonder. Write it. Okay, so... Frasco. Let's get to your list. <laughs> Froskurin, first place. Caps. Yeah! Yeah, all right, all right, Okay, all right. okay. I have a feeling that our number ones and our number twos will be flipped. So this I've, is... <laughs> this can, is we, can we just play the number twos, too? Because... Yeah. We'll get it. We'll just talk about number one and number two. Dracos. Second place, Caps. Yeah, surprise, surprise. All right. Wait, he'll say mine. Froskurin, second place, Wunder. Yeah, okay. So this was my logic here. I'm like, I'm American, NFL, draft. All the LEC players, they go into a little pile. You're making a super team. You get to grab one. Who do you grab? It is not Wonder. You grab Caps every single time. That's why he's number one. All right, I'm going to be honest. That's pretty tough. But I do think <laughs> that... Um, in the draft example, that's fantastic. I think when I look at like strongest individual player, though, I do think Wonder is the best right now. There are still Caps moments where Caps is like the god of all things, the absolute goat, and just like one v fives a game. Don't get me wrong, but I think I have never seen Wonder like really struggle. Consistency is super key. For consistency Wonder. is super key. So while I'd say his highs are slightly lower than Caps, ultimately. Um, his lows are also, like, his his floor is much higher, right? Like, I just don't think Wonder ever loses. And part of that is because top lane is a little bit more isolated, for sure. But Wonder was an absolute monster. Like, the pike top, yep. everything he busted at MSI, Wonder is horrifying. Like, I was looking through EU solo queue the other day, and literally everyone is playing pike top now. This guy I mean, is it the showed trendsetter. Up, uh, in LCS, I think that... I think that there's great arguments for both these players, and again, that's kind of why G2 are so absolutely terrifying. Um, I think key things for Wonder are 
his MSI was, I think, stronger than Caps uh, yep. overall. 100%. And I think he was like the defining factor. So if you're looking at like most recency and it's about who comes in, then I think you can make a great argument for Wonder. Um, that said, Caps, back-to-back LEC MVPs. I think that's only been done three times, Ooh, twice. Actually, wait, MSI MVP, which brings us to my favorite part of the show. What? We have some set updating to do. Oh, um, no. Brief aside here, folks. What do you got? It's just... It's just Got to take out the garbage. Yeah, yeah, all right. Oh, oh man, and that's, then we a just... gr- that's a great Fanatic jersey. Oh, oh, wait. oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> What's that? All right, so we've replaced the Reckless cutout with the Caps cutout, because ultimately that's... I mean, to be fair, Reckless needs to have something to strive for, so... He can, that's you can get your, your goal. Cut out Look, buddy, you might not win the LEC, but if you play real good at Worlds, we'll put you back on the Euphoria set. Can I take that home? I'm going to say no. <laughs> 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 I'm not going to ask any follow-up questions. <laughs> I'm just going to say no. Um, okay, so anyway, the other thing to consider about Caps is that we've had the privilege of uh, listening to comps, and I think that when you the take... The intangibles that Caps brings to a team. The intangibles that Caps brings to a team are pretty insane. I did not take those into account. Um, I valued consistency very highly on my list. It was uh, after carry potential was the, the second thing. I actually hope it's something that people will experience with ProView. Um, I was watching Faker at yeah. MSI on ProView, and I've watched Faker stream a lot, and if you guys haven't watched it, you should, because I think it, it tells a lot about kind of like what that mentality is and how he plays League of Legends. He looks everywhere. He is constantly all over the map, and you can kind of get a feel even though you can't listen to the comms about what's happening and what his thought process is and i think something is very similar for cap so by pro view use it to watch caps you will understand very quickly what we're talking about when we talk about intangibles that this guy brings to a team and just to make it a by pro by pro but real talk uh, pro view is super interesting because it's going to um show us a lot about how well these players play uh, individually and in laning phase, and uh, is obviously, as Double F mentioned, going to show a lot of who the trash cans are when it comes to that landing phase. Um, Caps, though, I do think, yeah, offers a lot of intangibles. His communication, from what we've heard and what from people have told us, is absolutely insane. So I think, for me, individually, I'd value Wonder higher, but it's hard to argue that Caps is probably... Uh, Caps is insane. And definitely, if he was my number three, you'd have, like, a right to punch me in the face. Now, here's the thing. I have a feeling that everyone... You pulled anyone, it was always going to be Caps Wonder, Wonder Caps for 1-2. I think number three is actually when things can start to take a turn. So, if we may, Yamato? Dracos, third place, Jankos. Jankos. Hmm. Interesting. That's right. Frost Curran, third place, Jankos. (laughs) Okay, two things. One, stop copying my list. (laughs) Two, why am I writing? My handwriting is so much worse than yours. Oh my god, I got it. (laughs) My pants are tight. <laughs> All right, guys. I think the top five of the list, I think what's going to surprise people uh, is that most people, when they when we reach out on Twitter and we ask questions, most of you are like, hey, here's, here's my top five, and it's every G2 player. And while G2 have the best players in each role, that doesn't mean they have the best five players in the league. And I think that's an important distinction to make. But Yankos, no doubt in my mind, is currently the best performing jungler, hands down. Had some absolute monster performances. Um, I think just a really overall a really good tournament from him. And to me, no one on the jungler list right now really comes close. Um, when my second jungler comes up, I definitely want to have the discussion about my number one jungler. Because yeah. how I'm pretty sure we organized it the same way. We went position by position. Yep. And then we tiered them. And we basically it, made like a top five list for each position yeah. to figure out who actually was going to make the cut for the list. And then, and then like then, slot it in. Yeah. Um, and it's actually funny because when you compare it to what the fans voted on our uh, list or the, what is it? The top five list. The top five list that the fans did, they're actually in very similar orders. There's only like a couple of differences that I found at least when comparing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> a couple. There's a couple names that I didn't think are going to show up on this list. That, yeah, uh, there's a couple names. There's a little but... fandom showing through <laughs> You can, it's okay. You don't have to look at the games. You just look at the names and then you look at the <laughs> answers that you need. Top five list. I mean, a couple of those rosters definitely did that. Oh, God. That's fine. We won't name names. All right. Caps, Wonder Yankos. Let's talk briefly for what, what do you think makes Yankos so good? Um, 
Hmm. I actually went back and forth. So my conversation was because I agreed with you. I cannot have all five G2 members For in sure. one through five, even though that, that feels bad because it feels back to Perk, uh, Perks and Mickey because I'm like, they are just as pivotal to that team's success. Perks, maybe even if you want to talk about intangibles slightly more than Yanko's Caps and Wonder because Perks roll swap to, you know, yeah, make yeah. this beast even possible. So, like, I don't want this to be a slight on Perks and Mickey. Um, it's just, I think that there are clear weaknesses when it comes to probably every player and perks and mickeys i think are a bit more exasperated than the performance that we saw consistently across the board at msi at uh spring split from wonder caps and yankos and that's why i had those three and then there's like a break and then you see perks and mickey show up um for me i was wondering if i wanted to cut it off at caps and wonder and maybe do someone else from g2 and then put yankos but after going back and forth i was like Jungle is such a stacked role, I feel, in LAC. It was one of those other roles where I was looking, I was like, there's a lot of good junglers that you could make a case for. But yep. Yankos really was uh, a cut above. And he had that same consistency that I liked from Wonder um, with the highs that I saw from Caps, which is why I ultimately decided to put Yankos at three and kind of have my stacked G2 top end. I think this season was really good for me for Yankos because um, for the longest time I was just really skeptical because Yankos, I, I felt, was like a jungler who was plagued by inconsistency. And I think that we saw such variance from him this season whether it was like the farm up style with Karthus, and yes, that champion was probably just overpowered, um, or it was the super high tempo aggressive ganking Olaf. Elise, the Olaf as well. And I think that that variance in play style and also the the consistency. And yes, there were a few hiccups. Obviously, it wasn't a perfect season for Yankos. Um, it wasn't a perfect season for G two. Like, yeah, at all, right? And like there were definitely definitely fumbles for the team. Um, but he is just. So good at being where he needs to be. His champion pool is generally just what I like to see. He's obviously very flexible in what he does. He'll swap to play the funnel if he needs to, right? He'll play out of the box shit and move where he needs to on G2. And on top of that, he's just so good at playing early game, which is personally my favorite way for G2 to play the game. Uh, and then, you know, he doesn't have to. Like, I, I have full faith that if we see a meta shift here on 9-11, um, that... Yeah, the Yankos will be able to keep up. I also want to talk about what I thought was the strongest aspect of G2's playstyle, which was actually their mid game. And we talked about this a lot at, at MSI. Anytime you saw Deficio, Vedius, and I, we were always talking about G2's mid game. It, it wasn't actually the early game that was mm. so potent and powerful. It's the fact that they know how to drive tempo, know exactly where they are, set up the one through one simultaneously, my, uh, find a pick. It's like they set so many objectives up at once. And then as soon as one domino falls, they all start following. And that's how they get very fast game times. And um, when you think about the the key kind of positions for that play style, it really is the jungler and side lanes for me. Yeah. Like, and, and Perks and Mickey are huge there because for a lot of MSI, it felt like a bot lane meta where it was like, who plays Varus Kinch? Who gets to play Kaisa Gallio? Who, and it's just like yeah, the rock, the paper, scissors. Um, but I just, I think huge shout outs to those three because when it comes to mid game, usually you just kind of park your, your bot lane and they just kind of hoover up CS and then they wait for you to pull them into team fights. Well, it's those three who are like juggling around the map. Yeah, and I, I do really think that like ultimately part of what makes G2 such a terrifying team is it just feels like every player on that lineup knows what they need to be doing. And like 90% of the time when you look at a roster, there's always one player who's like still learning the game and still figuring out, you know, when it was... Perks learning how to play a sideline back when, you know, first Sven and Mithy first joined G2, yep. and then it was Caps learning how to play a sideline. And now it's like, well, everyone here is, I'm not going to say that they're their final form, but everyone here understands how to play, like, let's say, like, most of the basic ways to play League of Legends, right? Whether it's 1 3 1, whatever, everyone understands what they need to be doing. And it seems like rather than any one voice having to direct everything, it's like, oh, it's like if I could move each, I can't move each of my fingers independently. That's bad. <laughs> Whatever. It's like if I could do, if I had five arms and each of those arms could conform a completely different task. You know, like when you see a really talented set drummer drum and two of his body, it's like his arms are moving completely different tempos. It's just actually stunning to watch. And uh, yeah, G2 are, well, let's just say it's going to be a rough season for the people who want to beat G2. Uh, <laughs> I don't think they're going to have quite the same XD start that we got from, from TL over in the LCS. Let's do number four. Boom. Dracos, fourth, fourth, Dracos, fourth place, place. Nuke Duck. Ooh. Yeah, hell yeah, Nuke Ooh. Duck. I'm gonna give it to the duck. Frost Curran, fourth place. The one and only, the manliest of men, the slayer of Spice tanks. Kakakabusha! <laughs> yes! Oh my god. You didn't, did you know you model? Did I spell it? No, it's with yeah. an S. No, 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 it's with a C. Is it with a C? It's with a C. You always put the S there on accident. Sorry. Cabochard. You're good. Cabochard. All right. 
Okay. All right. All right. All right. Do you want okay. me to explain mine first, or do you want to explain yours first? No, how about first you? off, did you know Yamato was going to be voicing this so that he could give you like a dramatic the one? I didn't the only, actually. The most handsome, beautiful <laughs> man to ever play top lane. But it was my idea to ask him. Okay. Great. Anyway. <laughs> um, all right. Nuke Duck. Let's talk about Nuke Duck. Nuke Duck is worse than Caps. That is very true. That's that. At the end of the day. Let's Wait. No. Up. Do you want to attack mine, or do you want to defend yours? Okay. I'll attack yours. Okay. But the issue is, is that Cabo might also appear on my list in the near future. But here's my issue with, with Cabo Shard, right? And this is this is the thing that I think was a struggle, is that he got super favorable matchups all season long. Absolutely. Yep. Mowgli, literally in half of his games, did that sociopath thing that he does where he just <laughs> takes the enemy jungler out of the game and is like, you want to be level one the entire game? I want to be level one the entire game. And just like contests camps until <laughs> someone can come and say, like pull him off. Like Mowgli, please leave him alone. <laughs> So, like, this man got to play on an island, and yes, he's very good individually, but I feel like he was set up to do that. And I feel like if there's... It's not that Cabo isn't a fantastic player. I just couldn't put him in the fourth place spot without knowing, like, what he looks like in a variety of styles. Now, admittedly, the Vitality bot lane was was kind of trolling for a lot of the split, so I think that they had to play that way. But because a lot of those questions haven't been answered and we haven't seen him in a, a new top lane meta... It's still very carry focused, let's be honest. So he'll, he might find something. But the Urgots and the Aatroxes of the world are, are pretty dead. Uh, and so I just wonder how good Cabo's actually going to be. And Aatrox is still alive and well. Aatrox is, yeah. <laughs> so I understand what you're saying. Because effectively, between New Deck and Cabo Shard, you kind of have like polar extremes. And that you have one guy who has so much versatility. He's like the Swiss army knife that mm -hmm. you bring. He's got everything Norwegian on him. Norwegian army knife, baby. Norwegian, Norwegian army, army knife. knife. And then you have like uh, a hardcore specialist who's eating up a lot of resources. But when you actually look into it, um, Cabo Shard's numbers are great. But he actually wasn't getting a ton of like focused resources in the same way that you would think about like Han Sama was. Yes, Mowgli would uh, be very top side focused, but it wasn't about repeated ganks on Cabo's lane. And I think that they just recognized what the meta was, uh, prioritizing champions like Urgot, which certainly boosted Cabo's numbers. You know, maybe if he's not on those champions, he doesn't have like astronomical CS dif uh, differences and things like that. Um, but Cabo carried a team between him and Jazuke that, was underperforming or inconsistent in a lot of other positions. Uh, they made it into playoffs. Cabo did fall down at the very end. You know, he had the Lucian versus Gangplank matchup. Oh, God. And Whippo also did say that, you know, Cabo doesn't understand how to transition a lead into a victory, which we did see in their best of five against Fnatic. So I think if you want to take, like, recency bias, you can start to tune down Cabo Shard. But mm -hmm. I just thought, like... For how inconsistent and, frankly, some some banana play that we saw from Vitality, the fact that they kept picking up surprise wins and it was always off of the back of Jazuke and Cabo Shard, I had to give a shout-out, whereas Nuketuck had more resources to work with. That said, Nuketuck's also <laughs> fairly high on my list. You'll see him in uh, a yeah. hot minute. I think just a, 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 this is the kind of the struggle for the Origin um, members in general. I put Nuketuck very highly, and I, I valued him for the, for the depth of champion pool. Um, and for what I would say is a pretty consistent overall performance. Yes, he doesn't carry in the game. When he carries, he carries big. Um, but I really love that consistency once again. I mean, you and can make an argument that Nuke Duck carries when he took the Vayne mid into the Galio. No, no, no for sure. It's just not all the time. Obviously, like the Vayne mid, the Zed game. The there's, Zed. There's, there's, there's great examples of him carrying. It's just not an all the time thing. Um, but the, the struggle with Origin is that because Origin are the the quote unquote smart team, the team that moves around the map. As I a like unit. them to call them the Chameleon. The Chameleon. They change shape. Yeah, this is a team that's very intelligent about the way that they play the game, and a lot of their success does not come from flashy individual outplays. It comes from smart macro movement, and so that is always going to be a certain, to a certain degree an intangible because you don't know at the end of the day. It's who's just making harder those calls. to see and harder to measure the strength that Nuke Duck probably brings to yeah, his team. Yeah, because at the end of the day, when Caps or Wonder, Wonder plays Pike Top, let's say, for example, you're like, that was some sick shit congrats, you're an insane player. Whereas when, you know, the convention, let's say like the more Korean way of playing the game where it's slower and more controlled, you're like, that's a great team, but who's really the great player there? And I think that's going to be the struggle as we get further with the with the Origin members. Uh, that's the thing. I actually had two, I have two players before Nuketuck on my list and both of the players that I put there, it was the idea of, while they don't have the same, I think, versatility that Nuketuck has in all situations, um, it's easier to see their strengths than it is Nuketuck's, but that like, Core three. Okay. Pretty pretty close. Give us the next one, Mr. Uh, Cannon. I'm ready for the flame. Draco's fifth place, ka 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 Cabo Shard! There you go. That's why it's hard to fight the Cabo Shard one. He's number five for me. 
What is your fifth? Frost current, fifth place. Kobe. What? And I'll give you a spoiler alert. <laughs> All right, give him my number six too, please. Draco, Mr. sixth Mr. place. Kobe. This is all pre-recorded, by the way, so I'm actually just shouting at my producer to play the audio files. It's Kobe. Frost current. Sixth okay, so place. this is. Did we pick the Luka. same? Yeah, we have the same top in... six. Huh? Did you have the same fight with Vettius about whether or not Mickey was your third uh, player, by the way? Did we just, like, actually just take the same exact path to yeah, create a Yeah, and then let me guess, it's Mickey Perks. No, it's not Mickey Perks. What the f***? Get to that in a second, okay. sorry. Fiddlesticks and sit down. Let's talk about this. Okay. Kabe is a top five player. You're going to have to defend that one for me. You, you want already... him in top six! I mean, that's fine, but there's a, there's a positional difference there. Okay. You so... put him over Nuke Duck. Uh, yeah, I did. So, but tell me, tell me about Kabe. Give me the good on Kabe. <laughs> okay. So I think that there's kind of two things here. Um, now this analysis will probably get flame a little bit, but there is a, uh, two famous actresses, um, Audrey Hepburn and Scarlett Hepburn. And there's a famous quote where Audrey is upset because she did not win the Oscar for a movie that she should have. And Scarlett Hepburn says, don't worry, dear, you'll get the one for, you'll get the Oscar for the one you don't deserve and you'll get recognized or yeah. And you'll get, you'll never get recognized for okay, the one hold you on, do. Hold on. So to be clear, your analysis is he doesn't deserve this, no, 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 but no. now he's, we put him in the top <laughs> five the, anyway. The joke is, is that I think that there was a lot of outcry for uh, Kabe, like people to really take a magnifying glass on his performance because of how consistent he was and start appreciating the things that Kabe brings to a team. So I did start looking more at Kabe. Um, yep. He has kind of flown under the radar. We kind of talked about how he's not the flashiest ADC. Nope. And why I really wanted to like give Kabe his moment, his Oscar right now, is that A, he did have a great split. His stats back that up. Splice made a really good run. I believe they finished fourth, fourth behind yep. Fnatic. Um, Kabe was a huge part of that. He has always been the consistent backbone of that team. And he diversified his champion pool. We Woo! finally got it. Kabe pulled out things like the Velkaz. So the Vigar. The vi so where you could have been like, you know, he's got a limited champion pool. He's kind of in the reckless boat where if he doesn't get to play his champions, then he's nothing. But Kabe, you know, he threw that all away. He would pull out things like the Draven, like the Vayne. He could still do things like the Sivir. And then at the very end, when he needed to make a last push, he brought out the mages. And while it isn't as good as Perk's mage play, um, because I think that there's like a lot of contention when, you know, how can you put Kabe here and not put Perk's when you're complimenting like diverse champion pool? I just think like, Overall, Kabe was never the reason why they lost a game. Whereas I think that sometimes Brooks was, was definitely the, the reason, reason they lost. lost we can go games. back to as far as Tom Kench games, and I think everyone will know uh, exactly what we're talking Kabe about. Kabe was also working with a very young roster. Duke, their coach, said it over and over that Kabe had to be a leader. And I'm not saying that he was like the shot caller or anything like that, but he had to be the core of the team and really ground a lot of. Young players. I'm not yeah. saying inexperienced, okay. but young players. And he's also leaning against Norse Garen, and Norse Garen himself has always said, you know, I'm still kind of learning what my responsibilities are on this stage of being, like, a support. For me, I, I think Kabi is, is very consistent, which, once again, the two things I value most are carrier potential, do they pop off, do they, like, 1v9 a game, and are they consistent, right? And, and Kabi is very consistent. He rarely, I feel like, has incredible pop-off performances, but when he does, they're really good, and he's clearly like he's always a good contributor to the team and i think that that to me given given his roster as you mentioned is more valuable than someone like perks and yes he has incredible performances him and mickey do have insane games Zyrocon games are the ones that always come to mind but also they have games where they they kind of run it down and are a liability for the team uh, you, you saw it in a few instances and in a few of their losses i mean to me he's like the nuke duck of adc that's kind of how i feel about him I don't know. See, the thing is, is I, 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 Nuke Duck has such a credit for being such like a cerebral, such an intelligent player, and I just don't know enough about how Kabi sees the game or what he contributes to the team because that's not what I guess people I'm, talk about. When I'm, talk about uh, I'm praising Nuke Duck's ability that like if you plug him into any situation, you're gonna get a good product. Result? You know yeah, what I mean? Like if you fair. take Kabe or Nuke Duck out of their teams and put them into different teams, you're probably gonna get the exact same look. Whereas I actually don't know if you do that to someone like Perks. Does that make sense? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's that is a big question about G two. Is like obviously they're five very talented players, but how much of their extra strength comes from the fact that they're a unit as they are now? At the I, end of the day, I, I feel like it's very similar rankings. I didn't feel like he could make it or crest into top five just because I didn't. I mean, it's just, it's such a small difference, right? But to me, it was like I couldn't couldn't in good consciousness put him there because I still didn't feel like it wasn't enough for me. I think it's really strange how we have like the three guys that are just slightly changed up it's these are actually much closer than i thought that they would be yeah, yeah, yeah i was 
I thought really when I put Kabe on there that that was going to be like maximum edge lord at number six place, and you've ruined it by going even greater edge lord to me. Like <laughs> I thought I took a trip to Hot Topic, but you like have been listening to Marilyn Manson for years. <laughs> like <laughs> I, 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 I like was not ready, but uh, yeah, I think I think Kabe is really good, and I think that's this is obviously something that people are going to be upset about because there's a lot of um, all star names in the eighty carry role. You talk about how many eighty carries there are on a list. There's a lot of eighty carries on my list too, but I I do think at the end of the day, if you want the guy who's going to pop off and carry your games, like there probably are better players, but I don't think they exist in the 80 carry role. But if you want someone who is super consistent, super reliable in a role that I think outside of mage picks rewards that consistency more than anything else, I think copies, copies your man. The name that I need to talk about next is um, upset. Yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, is like, uh, again, if, if, if you're following along on my list, you then see that it's going to be in terms of where the ADCs are ranked. It's Kabe, uh, Perks, and then upset. Is, is it not reckless? And reckless then comes after upset. Okay, well you're spoiling your list. Well, you, yeah, but you don't know where they're actually placed. But that's Ooh. just where the ADCs are ranked. Okay. Um, and the thing is, is upset, phenomenal player. Uh, checking into his champion pool, and I don't want to say that he has a small champion pool. I'll say that he has a limited effective champion pool, and maybe yep. that's team based. Um, but if you look at him, it was Ezreal Kaisa as like his two big picks. And again, like why I'm if I'm thinking about like it's a draft, I'm in the NFL, I get to pick someone. Yes, you could definitely make a case to grab upset. And I think what's going to be really weird. And I can make a case to ban Ezreal and Kaisa, couldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, and then you could be like, oh, you know, upset can play more of those champions. Yep. If you look at him historically, uh, but I'm just thinking, like, recency. Right now, I would feel more confident grabbing hold of Kabe. I think what gets really weird is that when other spaces get put in between them, like, Kabe and upset are really far apart on this. Uh, apart on this list in terms of numerical value, but and when you rank them as ADC versus ADC, it is very close. And I think you can make a conversation about like which one you would want in which scenario because none of these players on this list, outside of probably our top two or top three, are like the perfect player in every single scenario. No. And I think there's it's interesting when you uh, incorporate the bot lane rankings that the public has put together, as well as actually a lot of what the, the lists were that you guys submitted on Twitter. I actually think the bot lane's the most different from my list. For sure. But let's hold it. Let's, let's like wait until we get a few more of those names on the list. Um, I feel pretty good about that. Number seven. I really want us to get different here. Dracos, seventh place. Mickey X. Mickey Fosker X, hell yeah. Seventh place, Mickey X. Is that also Mickey X? Is that what I heard? Oh, my God. Is it also Mickey? All right, guys. This is... Uh, I, I swear it'll it'll get more contentious here as we go. Um, Michael X, a.k.a. Mickey X, a.k.a. Young Midoriya, um, is an absolute smurfer. And um, while I fear for his wrists, and I hope for the best for him in the future, is... The best playmaking support that Europe has ever seen. And uh, this guy is an unstoppable monster. And I think that if him and Perks had another year to play together, they probably will be the best bot lane in the West. Oh, yeah. But right now, I do think that Mickey is the stronger half of this bottom lane, no doubt in my mind there. And um, God bless those Tom Kench Devour nerfs. My boy's never playing that champion again. Mickey Mickey is insane. I mean, coming out of MSI, I think the only cry would be, why isn't he rated higher? Um and obviously there were some pretty XD games from uh, Mickey and Perks. Please, once again, no Tom Kench. But uh, this guy's just insane. Mickey is insane. Mickey has to be the number one support, no doubt. Yeah, I agree. I think it's super easy, again, to like fly out the gate and just be like, all five G2 members, top five, one, two, three, four, five. And I was just like that. Again, it feels bad when you see how far like Mickey and Perks are from the rest of their team, even though I think the space is in the between all these is names. very far away. <laughs> oh, do you put him even farther? We'll see. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> um, yeah, a total agreement with Mickey. He proved himself on an international stage against uh, some of the best support competition in the world. Like, Core JJ wasn't having a bad tournament. That guy was popping off, and Mickey held his own. Uh, did it with less practice time because of his injury. So yeah. I think Mickey certainly proved himself. Yeah, remember, when the Mickey, Mickey's wrist was bad, there were days where he didn't scrim at all, and the days where he did scrim, he'd play two games. He showed up and just... Absolutely obliterated. Mickey's Mickey's insane. He's a trooper. Once again, uh, hope the best for his medical conditions. Let's get let's get number eight. Dracos eighth place. Self-made man. Ooh. Yeah, you like that one? That's actually spicy. Oscar yeah, hell eighth yeah, place. Let's go. Perkovic. Perks. <sighs> the URA 
you're gonna take the the, the easy out. That's fine. Ah, uh, you the... mean the correct out? Okay, so first and foremost, all that flame that you gave me from Kabe. What the hell? Self-made is number eight? Bro, all right, you want to talk about a man? That means you're saying the second best jungler in the league is self-made. Yeah. Broxa and Cold both exist. Yeah, and Broxa copied self-made's cheesy level two pathing to get a lot of success. Fanatic invented. No, they invented cheesy level one <laughs> pathing. Don't you take this away from my boy self-made. Now, like, here's the thing. And actually, I don't know who made Brooks it first. Like, so, someone's gonna like look up the Skarner. solo Q game. He like level three dove a tower with Nocturne. That's wonderful. <laughs> anyway, Brox is on a good team with good players, and that takes away from some of his credit because Selfmade took a not good team to playoffs. Excuse me, Selfmade's not playing with Whippo. I've read Ooh, the Reddit comments. Okay, all right, <laughs> we'll calm down on the. We'll see if he shows up. Anyway, Selfmade. Is insane. Selfmade literally did not just make a career for himself. He's literally carried four other players to playoffs and then benched one of them to get someone else. Selfmade is an absolute monster. And when I looked at this, remember the number one thing that I value more than anything else is carry potential. And if there is one jungler besides Yankos that I think can single handedly decide an early game, it is Selfmade. Yes, he does lack a little bit in consistency. His, some of his early Karthus games were hot ass, they were bad. But this guy, if anyone is going to, like, carry a team, is it going to be on this SK roster? I'm not sure. But in terms of, like, individual skill level, I think self-made is just an absolute monster. I agree. I think the sentiment is is that, um, you know, maybe the SK roster has a ceiling that we don't see. They become absolute monsters. Congratulations for them. No, this guy's playoffs. going to NA or he's getting picked but up by a different team I'm like, in a year. This is literally, like, the waiting room for self-made yeah, before it's, he... It's literally <laughs> like, they're like, how can we make you look really good so we can... Sell you for a bunch of money. And he's like, give me four randoms. Let me make level two ganks every game and I will destroy the world. Um, so the thing is, is I think self-made was figured out a little bit at the very end. I think mm -hmm. splice games really uh, illustrate this. Whereas if, if you ward your Krug camp, you will find self-made. He loves Krugs <laughs> and it's really actually easy he to just, track his path. He can't help himself. He can't help it. And you actually see splice do this where they're like, at the simultaneously, they ward both Krug camps, and then they see self-made go, and then they collapse on so, him. So I think he is a bit figured out. I think his Infinity Edge Rek'Sai game okay, is also going to slow XD, him down a bit. So for sure, in the same way, we talked about recency kind of counting against him. Yes, self-made was a little figured out. Yes, I do not approve of his Infinity Edge Rek'Sai. Mega, mega hilarious build, though. Um, but I also, I'll say that like I'm giving him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt to transition his play style out, and I'm, I'm hoping for his sake, that SK is a little bit stronger in the individual lanes, because I think that will give him more opportunities to shine. Because also, I think that in the early game against SK, you're like, hey, so if we take out Selfmade, do they just lose? Spoiler, yes! Oh, God, who would have thought? Um, not that Crown Shot and Dreams didn't have some fantastic games as well. It was just like Selfmade was the guy who dictated the pace of the okay, game. Okay, screw Selfmade. Time to talk about perks. Perks is like inverse Kabe, and where Kabe is a great traditional ADC, and he's like, meh, at mages, Perks is a god on mages. He's kind of meh on traditional ADCs. He's good as I was, I was like, he plays a lot of the pseudo mage AD carries where they His use spells. His was good, but that's that's the thing with Perks. I love, um, he proved himself on an international stage, very limited practice time with his true core buddy and Mickey right there. I think I have them together because they prove that they are an international world-class bot lane. Maybe not the best in the international world, but certainly strong. Um, my only thing is, is I can't wait for them to get more time for Mickey to heal up and for Perks and Mickey to climb higher up on this list. All right. I mean, it's hard for me to argue. I've actually put Luca much further down. Um, oh, why? Why don't we'll save it for when we get there? Okay. I'll talk about the, the, the perceived weaknesses. I agree with the strengths. I think Perks is a very crazy, uh, is an insane player, no doubt. But he does not make even my top ten. Spoiler. Let's get to number uh, nine. Number nine on the old list. Draco's Take ninth away. place. Hillisang. Frost current Whoa. ninth place. Whoa. Broxa. Play Frost. That's right. Did I spell Hilly's name right? All right, so we both got a Fnatic player there. We both, that's, yeah, Did I? Ah. Yeah, it looks right to me. I, whatever, dude. I'm so learning. We learned. said it right. Let's the whatever. European names. I'd like to thank Vizichachi for not making oh, it to the God. list. Oh, <laughs> God. Um, okay, so I have two things. First and foremost, uh, again, I ranked the junglers, or I ranked every position, and then I put yep. them on order. So yep. I have Yankos, and then I have Broxa as my yep. second best jungler. Broxa has shown internationally that he can be a superstar and carry just as hard as self-made can, and he can also play more styles, and I think 
is just all around an incredible jungler, which is why he's my second best jungler of the week, which you're trolling there with self-made. Nah. Uh, and then second to Hilly, the best fanatic performing member was Broxa. Second to Hilly. That's important to know. No, second, no, no. Second to Hilly. Second was Hilly. <laughs> second, no, 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 no. Let's, 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 let's be clear. Once again, the two things I value more than anything are consistency, but I value consistency second. The first thing that I value is carry potential. Now, Broxa, pretty consistent. Did have some troll games this split like But I don't does. think that they were his fault. Sure. When Hillisang performs, it's Hillisang's fault. I'm going to take that. This man, I have always said, is a coin flip player. But my God, when Hillisang flips heads, everyone dies. No one gets to play League of Legends. And the game ends. Hillisang is the second best playmaking support. And this is the thing that I value. Now, when you look at support lists, people are going to bring up names. They're going to be like, Ignar. Oh, but what about Mithy? Ignar is a great playmaking support, but also, uh, it's not. Yeah, just as coin flip as Hilly. And in fact, Ignar and Upset shit on that bot lane with Hilly in it. Sometimes you get heads. Sometimes, sometimes you both you get, get tails. tails. <laughs> okay? I'm not saying that he doesn't have bad games. What I am saying is that when he gets heads, he's insane. He's unstoppable. And the thing that I don't super value on this list and that I'll probably get flack for is I don't value the quote-unquote smart players a lot because at the end of the day, when I, I don't know, and I'm willing to say that. Like, I don't know. Mithy's a name that's going to show up on my list, but he's going to show up much later. I don't know what Mithy does for the team. People I like, cannot believe Mithy's, that you ranked Hilly above Mithy's Mithy. So, they're like, Mithy is so smart and he's so good at the game. And look, I know Mithy personally. Mithy is incredibly smart. Have I listened to all of Mithy's team comms? No. Have I seen Mithy hardcore pop off on Pike? Also no. <laughs> so that's the thing, right? And I'm, I'm not ready to say 100%, but... I do like what Hillisang brings to the table. I think that um, when they're carrying through bottom lane, I'm more excited when they gank that bottom lane because Hillisang finally gets to leave the lane. Not that Reckless's vein gets a kill, right? Like, that's what makes me excited about when you see Fnatic play that bot-focused play style. Uh, I think Hilly is a huge confidence player, and I think that spending time coaching teams, um, it's so hard to be able to kind of, like, pinpoint and illustrate to an audience what it means when you say, like, a confidence player, but... Watching Hilly, like, if his first couple of minutes go well, like, if that initial gank just works for him, he suddenly finds so much confidence, so much momentum that he'll look for plays, and he'll be scouting around. Because you're right, Hilly's biggest strength is when he's playing a roam support like his Pike. Mm, mm, mm. Um, but the thing is, is, like, if it doesn't work for him, if he feels down about himself, if you... Because we always talk about how players, like, will sometimes just clam up in comms, and I'm not saying that that's what Hilly does, yep. but you can almost, like, see it in his play style where he'll be on a champion that needs to make plays. It didn't go right in the early game, and he just almost, like, withers and dies. And then it kind of takes a reset period for Hilly to find his groove again, and it's that, like, inconsistency. Like, you can say, Hilly brought the Galio support into the LEC. I believe he's, like, the first support to do it. And then, I mean, we saw how potent and powerful it was at MSI. Um, if you give him Rome champs, like, the, the likes of the Pike, yeah, he can pop off. But I'm like, give me the consistency. Give me the super high highs. Give me the rock, the core of the team, and Broxa. Yeah, Brox is no doubt a rock, but I really love high highs. It's consistent versus high highs here. Uh, the thing I will I thought... say is that the reason why I like the the emotional point is that when we had we've had Fnatic on the show a lot when they've been winning and when they've been struggling, uh, and something that I believe Brox and Blippo talked about when they were here is how much their bot lane started to improve when Hillisang felt like he was getting that trust from Reckless and like how much better he could perform. And so that is a difficult factor, and I have been very critical of rating players highly in the past who've struggled with onstage anxiety or, like, you know, anything that, like, holds back their performance, whatever it was. You know, it was in the past it was upset. You know, he had a lot of nerves on stage. So I will say that I'm giving Hillisang the benefit of the doubt here and in terms of that, like, he's going to get that confidence from his team. But absolutely the in-game confidence is a factor there too. And I'm just saying I'm willing to flip that coin every time because if I look at Fnatic... I don't even know if Hilly's highs are higher than Brox's highs. Hilly's high, absolutely. Outside what, of that, that one Lee insanely Sin, sin play, <laughs> that one insanely sin play, that's it. That's that's the thing everyone brings up. And yes, Brox is a bamf for that. He is. He single handedly like, ooh, Europe. That was the most Europe <laughs> moment I've ever. I was ah, oh, so proud. I'm way more proud than when we three would TL. That didn't mean anything, but when we beat SKT, yes. Similar moments for me. Similar highs. That said. Hillisang has those high highs more consistently. He also has the low lows more <laughs> consistently. But I could see why you put Broxa there. I had to I'm already going to say that Hilly probably has the biggest differences on our list. Hilly is so far down my list. But he is on your list. He is on it, of course. Bam. He has to be. He's a great player. Fantastic. Okay. Should we go number 10? Yeah. Number 10. Dracos, 10th place. Upset. <laughs> Hell yeah. Let's go. 
Frosker in 10th place. Stone Cold. OG Cold. Cold. I'm surprised he didn't say trashy. Oh, he does have a hard time not calling Jonas trashy. But that's history. They coach together. Um, okay. All right. I'm so ready to fight. But just, can you please just explain to me why Cold is number 10 on your list? Like, what? Uh. First off, I love you, Jonas. But... I, once again, smart players that are smart. Well, okay, Cold made game. playoffs. Upset didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Cold, okay, fair. Yeah. Um, Cold took second. Sure. Upset didn't make playoffs. Got it. Uh, Cold plays multiple different styles, and I actually think he and Nuke Duck are the two things that make OG such a flexible the OG quote unquote the chameleon. chameleon. Yeah. Um, where Upset is everything to his team. He is yeah. the the superstar oh, yeah. of Schalke. He Absolutely has is. much less Stay to work more. with. Give me more reasons. But um, it's funny. Upset, I have this chunk in my list where it's three junglers and then it's upset. And to me, honestly, I have no problem actually flipping him either above or below. See, this is this is the thing. So this is my this is my jungle pack. Your list makes sense. I know what you're rating for. You're like, would you pick this player in a draft? And Cold feels like that universal plug-and-play kind of jungler, yep. which is great. I love that consistency. But once again, the high highs for me have not been there. There's a Gragas game. I know. You like the pentakill on Kai'Sa that he loses. I love, well, the, not that. Actually, that game is not one that I would put. <laughs> he got a pentakill, but he lost. No, like, who cares? But I, I think that, like, when you want a player to carry your team, upset is pretty high. If I look at, like, hard carry players in our league, upset is pretty high on that list. In fact, upset is... Upset is number ten because that's my list. It's hard carry players in our league, basically. Um, yeah, you could make a you could make a team of the only ho- non hard carry player there is Nuke Duck. Honestly, and at, the, at, at, at this point, if we had like upset Hillisang and self made, we'd have like the most coin flip jungle plus bottom side of the map ever. And I it mean, would... frankly, if you actually just took seven, no, let's take six down. So let's say Hilly is support, upsets ADC, you got self-made as your jungler, Mickey can play Pike top, and then Kabe plays Vigar mid. That's actually a good team! Oh yeah, dream team. Um, upset, I rate upset very highly. I, despite the fact that he has an ab- abysmal champion pool, him and Reckless both actually, which is part of the reason why it's hard. It's harder to rate either of them higher than this. I, I like what but upset. But Ezreal's brings. always in style. True, and I like I like really like what uh, upset brings to the table. I think that he is. Overall, he lacks the experience that Reckless has, but I would take him right now over Reckless because I I have seen him do a lot with less resources, yeah. with just sheer 2v2 laning prowess with him and Ignar, and that inspires a lot of confidence for me, especially with the other roster changes that Shaka have made, bringing in Trick, and I, I put that faith in Upset, and I really do think that like right now this guy is going to come in and he's just going to hard smash in the first few weeks. I mean, I hope so. I think, uh, again, Shalka lost a lot of their confidence, felt like they were stuck in a rut. Um, the thing that put Upset down for me was just I looked at consistency and then I also looked at achievement, and unfortunately the three players that I have above Upset all made it into the playoffs. They're all in the same position. This is where all of my junglers are because I value jungle as a higher role than I did um, ADC. Like, I have, what, two ADCs, but... It's perks really count, and then it's like jungle right there, and then upset comes in. Does perks really just count? perks really count. Well, I don't he's know, just kind of like an every- perks is perks. Phil, he's Phil. Perks is Phil. Yeah, that's the that's the distinct honor that he gets of being like the first <laughs> lane swap like that. That's so good in both roles is it's just like you're perks. You know what you play perks. I don't know what that role is, but it's your name. Your name. We'll just call it that. And then I was looking at upset's champion pool, um, or at least what he showed during spring split. And you know, if you get those champions every single time, play it. That's fine, but. Needed a little bit more to put him above the junglers. <laughs> just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit right. more. So that's top 10. Yep. I, I understand Cole, but once again, want more hard carry. So now we're going to do three at a time. Yeah? Flippity, flippity, flippity. Um, Dracos, oh, oh, 11th place. 11th place. Broxa. Broxa. Let's go. Dracos, 12th place. Oh. Barney. That's how far he is. I know. <laughs> I had to think about it. Dracos, 13th place. Perks. Got it. ADC perks or mid perks? We will never find Dracos, out. Dracos, 13th place. Did I get tired? Perks. There you go. Perks, I'm perks. actually surprised you have perks under upset. Yeah. Frosker in 11th place. Self made. The Sejuani Ult Hell flicker. yeah, get my boy on that list. Pop off carry. Frost Curran, 12th place. Upset. 
Okay. Like I said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 13. Rosker in 13th place. The Italian Stallion. Jizuke. Oh, no. <laughs> We're going to follow up on why I said oh, no in a minute. That's a J. Double I, by the way. Is it? I think. No. I don't know. It's <laughs> double I. What? I I actually can't read his name. Double I. Right here? Right there. What? J I I. Me. All right. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here. Oh god, there's a lot of a lot of sadness in my heart. I have never read Jizuke's name correctly. I had no idea there was a double I. Yep. I feel like I've been lied to my entire life. That yep. is a today I learned there are two I's in Jizuke's there you name. Go. All right, we've already talked about Brox and self-made, but to say my piece once again, yes, wonderful carry performances from Broxa. Yes, consistency, two things I love. That's why he's number 11. Are his highs as high as someone like self-made for me? No, I value those highs more. Is his consistency way better? Absolutely, sure. Totally give that to him. Um, like I said, upset is just behind my jungle pack. I think you make good arguments. I think you can argue that he gets flipped above, and then suddenly, if you actually put upset above the jungler, probably a lot less people rage. But I just, it wasn't there for me. I preferred I mean, this cerebral player. That name is in reckless is going to piss some people off. So <laughs> that's unfortunate. Uh, Jizuke. My big thing about Jizuke, and I did initially want to put him higher on my list, is that I couldn't justify it because his performance was so hit and miss, especially towards Second the very half end. Was really rough, yeah. Uh, and he also missed some games. Didn't get to play the entire split. Yep. Um, that said. There were some games, just like uh, Cabo Shard, where Jizuke was the sole carry, where he was on rise, and he's like, Attila Jack Troll, I don't know what the hell is happening over there, but I am going for the end. And I think that there is a very clear like ledge where you go, Caps Nuke Duck, then it's a bit of a gap, Jizuke. Maybe Jizuke's back on form, and that gap has like shored back up, because that's all we want. We want like Jizuke in form, mm -hmm. Nuke Duck in form, Caps, and then just battling out. And then there's a giant drop-off, and there's anyone else. I don't care if that's if if you want to try to make a case for Febivan or Nemesis or humanoid or whoever humanoid or whoever it is a massive gap that you I need agree. like a full stretcher to get across agree. that. Agree. Um, Perks is rated so low for me just because of the inconsistency, and I, um, I just don't know what the next evolution of Perks looks like. And for me, the fact that he's on such a star-studded lineup actually docks him points um, because. It's just so hard to play against G2. And I feel like, well, I don't think that Perks is being carried. And in, uh, outside of the games where it's really clearly obvious, like the, the once again, the Vars Tom Kench games where he's clearly being carried. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I don't feel like we've seen that form of Perks yet where I'm like, give me 80 carry Perks, right? Like, I'm drafting a team. I want 80 carry Perks on that list. If I'm drafting Perks, it's like, oh, it's because he like knows all these things. And it's like, oh, we could swap into mid lane if we need to. But if this guy, if I'm considering this guy as an 80 carry, right? then like I, he doesn't give me everything that I want yet. I haven't seen everything that I want from an AD carry. Okay, yet. my mentality is is like if I have to pull from a draft and let's just say it's the AD carries, I'm going to grab Kabe first. And yep. if I can't have Kabe, I'm going to grab Perks. And if I can't have Perks, I'm like, upset's great. I still feel great about that. That's like, that's so much bang for your buck. Oh. Alfari is not in your top 13. No. So I've been dotting down the farthest away on our list so far yeah. and so far it's hilly and alfari i thought self-made you and i had self-made far apart and then i saw where you put hilly i was like oh damn see to me alfari is like the true rock and it's one of the only like true rocks that i have on this list outside of uh actually nuke duck and cole interesting the og players i completely are like that. disagree with your read on alfari i think he is actually the x factor for origin like if you there's really ever, think he's the x factor yeah if there's ever going to actually be a, a, a hyper carry for origin who will like be repeatedly popping off every single time because of course you can have vein mid and zed but nuke duck for majority of the time is kind of not a control mage player but he's kind of like the and blanket he knows he's gonna smash you he's like chilling yeah you know, he's, he's like he's like tucking you in he's just doing what he needs yeah. but i think alfari's like almost can be the shy esque, where he's gonna be the dude who's pulling out not the weird shit, but like the carry shit. You mm. know, it's like the cannon, and he will be, he'll have his SMEB moment. So I actually think if Origin ever reached that next tier, it's because Alfari is like consistently finding these crazy plays and being that that Alfari that he was always supposed to be, that everyone oh, really? gets excited My eyes are about. on Patrick for, for the OG. Uh, oh, the Ash player? <laughs> the Ash Tom Kinch bot lane? Yeah, but I, I'm the. I want to see the pop off from Patrick if we're going to see someone evolve. But I, I can see what you're saying in that angle. Yeah. But I think that for me, Alfari was 
he did have those carry moments, but I was often very much a role player, and I, I thought that... More Kenan, more Draven. More Kenan, more Draven. For Absolutely for sure. I want to see more of that, and I just think that, like, Alfari has adapted to a lot of metas. He's been comfortable, I think, in... Um, I'm going to say most of them. There was a few points in his career where he was uh, not fantastic. But overall, I just really think that Alfari is is one of the best top laners. His third best, actually, yep. on the list. Which lines up perfectly with what you said at home for the people who voted on the top five list. And, and overall, I just I think Alfari is just really good. And I think that you're right that this carry potential is there. But I, I really liked what he brought to the table and... Overall, his consistency, although that was hard with OG because, like, the first half of the split, they did just kind of so run it down a little what's bit. What's interesting is we're we're already aligned with the top, um, which on your guys' fan list, you have Wonder, Cabo, Alfari, Whippo, and then Soaz. And what I think is really interesting here is um, I personally feel that there's a big gap between Alfari, Whippo, and Soaz. Yep, for sure. Um, I actually 100% agree with this. I I think you would put Soaz over Whippo, but I put Whippo over Soaz. Or did we bo- both? No, we both. Ended, I ended up with Bobo over Soaz in the end. Well, what I think is interesting is that Wonder, Cabo, and Alfari all have the potential to play both the defensive and the offensive, and I think that was really exasperated by this meta. For Whereas sure. Whippo and Soaz, Whippo had his pop-off moments on like the Aatrox, where you had to ban Aatrox against For Fnatic, sure. otherwise he would destroy you. You had to camp him. Um, we saw that in his playoffs. Whereas I feel like Soaz never really got there, like, and that was what limited Soaz. I think if the meta shifts back towards more being about map play, more being about zone control, about uh, initiation and kind of like picking your moments with your top laner, um, like with like the Scions. Mm. So as uh, has incredible skills right there. But if the meta continues where it's Aurelia, Aatrox, um, you know, these Rise, Silas, like all of these champions still up into the top lane, unfortunately, I just feel like so as in current form isn't as versatile as the other top laners above him, which is why I think. Because I was actually surprised for how much flame I'm seeing Whippo get in the community's yeah, mouth right fourth. now. Like, you guys ranked him fourth. And I, I agreed because I felt like Whippo had that extra edge that Soaz didn't get to consistently showcase. Like, you can go back to, like, his Urgot but, game where he, like, just destroyed yeah, yeah, all also, of the Fnatic again, like, members. The gap <laughs> between top three and anything else in our top lane pool is tough. Yeah. Right? It's, like, pretty significant drop-off. Um, why don't we do the next three, 14, 15, and 16 so you are running. Dracos, 14th place. Cold. Stone Cold, baby. Dracos, 15th place. Reckless. Dracos, 16th place. Mithy. <laughs> this is hilarious. Froskuren, 14th place. Xerxes. Roskuren, 15th place, Mithy. It's reckless, isn't it? Froskuren, 16th place, the Oriana Hoverer, the Draven Hoverer, Hillisang. Do you just make pockets? You're like, I, the supports will get lonely if I don't put them together. <laughs> the junglers will get lonely. <laughs> okay, do you have Zersei on your list? Yeah, he's coming up. Okay, perfect. Um... I wanted to put Xersei initially with my jungle list, but I felt like he didn't have the experience, didn't have the consistency, and didn't have the carry potential that Upset and Dezuke did. So I separated him from the rest of the jungle pack, and that's why he appears underneath Dezuke and Upset, because I felt like both these players had incredible highs, but didn't have the birth of diversity. Um, wanted to give Xersei a very high spot up. Splice did amazing this split, and I think it was because of Kabe, and it was because of Xersei. Their early game, entirely on that guy's okay, back. Okay, so super agree. I think the thing for me and why I have rated him slightly lower he does still make the list. He is, no doubt, one of the best junglers in Europe, but also does not have a history of consistency. There are halves. It's like almost half a split. We see a, a switch flip. Depending, It doesn't matter which half. You look at it historically. There are splits where he is like the innovator, and he is smashing everyone on UOL. And you look at some of those first splice splits, and there are those first times in splice where he's like, kind of doing nothing and he's like playing Zach when no one's playing Zach and then he has like some crazy Sejuani games where he's like absolutely carrying exactly where he needs to be all the time and so while I think this is probably his best split yet overall with this finish for Spice um, I still do think that I have not seen that consistency yet from him and that while some of the carry potential is there also it's just like it's not like carry potential or he's trying to carry and he's feeding. It's like carry potential or he's invisible. And like that to me is I really hate that. I really hate when a player just doesn't feel like they exist on the map. And and there have been those moments in the past for sure, say. Um, I then have my pockets of Mithy and Hilly. 
Um, I put Missy over Hilly because, again, I valued having the consistency. For sure. Um, unfortunately, Missy didn't give me what I wanted out of a support because if, like, G2 are basically setting what the meta is going to be for their team, you need to have playmaking. And Missy can do that, and he did have some of those, like, pop-off games, but for majority, it felt like Origin decided to put him on, like, a back burner and yeah. play a lot of the Tom Kench, and he didn't get to showcase that. So, you know, maybe he switches it up. It's like, I don't know, Pike, Alistar every game. Um, or more importantly, like Galio, and he did play some Galio games, although some of his Mithy's Galio was a little bit questionable. Uh, <sighs> that's why I put Mithy there. Hilly, I think he had higher highs than Mithy, although Mithy did have some incredible games. Um, but just... Not worth the cost. It wasn't him. <laughs> I'll pay the price. It hurt. It was, it was a double sword. Go. Put him up. <laughs> So, baby, this is like the analyst. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. take the safe bet that if we do this a hundred times, Mythy is going to be the right choice. going to be the, sure. the safe, safe bets are choice. Fine. And, and for me, Mythy is a safe bet. But I also think that I look at Mythy and I don't think that we have the same problems that he did when he came into this split where we're like, oh, God, NA Mythy. And like Origin, we're obviously struggling a lot in the early weeks with just dying randomly. I do think he's back in form. Uh, but I also don't think that he's one of the big playmakers, once again. And I do wonder if stuff like the Tom Kench or these more defensive options are Mithy saying, hey, I can't play these proactive playmakers. It's not a good option for us. Put us on Tom Kench Ash. And then the bigger thing for me is then if, if that's the situation that he's in, is he actually stopping Patrick from playing hyper carry bot lanes because his mechanics aren't good enough to keep up. Now, that's a lot of speculation, right? Like, I don't know 100% for sure how much of that is true. But what I will say is that, like, they're a great Tom Kench Ash bot lane. Wonderful. Woo. Love it. But at the end of the day, like how a lot of those bot lanes work out is that someone makes the call, someone is maneuvering around the map. You could give that benefit of the doubt to Mithy, but I don't know. So I'm not going to give him any more credit there. Why is cold and reckless so low on your list? I Once again, the cerebral players, I don't know. I don't value them as much. I thought cold was very consistent. I thought he had a few carry moments, but I didn't feel nearly as many. And I thought that overall he did his job very well in playoffs. But once again, the consistency wasn't there for me. The and one cold position has been that like, you want the cerebral player is the jungler. Y you can make that. I mean, I'll have brain dead laners any day. As long uh, as my jungler's smart. I, I just, it's not there yet for me with cold. Because I've seen so many different versions of this guy play. And while this OG version is looking like one of the strongest, if not the strongest, it hasn't been consistent. And for me... I've watched so many European junglers have these crazy-ass career swings. You look at Yankos, you look at Cersei, you look at even Broxa had, like, his breakout split was insane, and the next split he immediately tanked and was, like, invisible through playoffs. Uh, it, consistency for me in junglers, I think, is probably more important than it is anywhere else. And while Cold was pretty consistent overall over the course of the split, it still hasn't been there long enough for me to give him the benefit of the doubt. Hilariously, if he was a brand-new player and this was his first split, I would be so much aboard the type train. It's actually his history that, like, docks points for me because I'm Trolling. concerned. That's no. Fine. Reckless, on the other hand, Reckless and Upset are very similar players. They're, like, exactly the same in a lot of ways. Um, I would say Upset is... Uh, you enraged two fan bases at once. Who cares? Upset <laughs> uh, and Reckless are both very traditional hyper-carry players. I think they do very well, and they get a lot of resources. I think they each have picks that they're very good on. In the case of Reckless, I think his Vayne was his special pick. I think Upset is his Ezreal, right? Um, I think the difference for me is that Upset's team was rough for a lot of games. Really rough. And while Fnatic struggled at the start, they pulled it together and they looked good. And when they were winning games, it, at first, it was like everyone go bot lane and set Reckless up to look good. Everyone go bot lane and set Reckless up to look good. Vayne's playing, or Reckless is playing what is, uh, was, is now, what, or was at the time, eventually realized to be an incredibly overpowered Vayne. Yep. Um, you know, that build was just disgusting. Thank God for the nerfs. Uh, and I don't, I think Wall Reckless might get even better results in like the first four weeks of the split. I think it's more about his team than it is about himself as an individual. And so Upset might have a worse score, but I still think Upset will be the better performing player. I agree. And that's why Reckless hasn't even appeared on my list yet. Boom. Boom. Do we want to do three more? No, let's just do... Should we reveal the 20th at the very end? or should Reveal we do the 20th at the very end. Because okay. then, then it's like all the people who aren't on your list. Zephyr. <laughs> I... Zephyr. 17th place. All right, but we're going to edit the 18th one. Was Zersei. 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 I don't know how to say his name. I'll just give you guys a couple ones. Wait, pause it. Don't play that one. Don't play number 18. Dracos. Number 18. 
Jazuke. You're trolling. It's Bwipo. It was Bwipo, but I forgot about Jazuke. And despite the fact that multiple people looked at my list, no one pointed out that I forgot Jazuke. So, so both I'm stupid, Deficio. but also Deficio. How did you not notice I missed it? Also, Vettius, how many people noticed this list? And I missed Jazuke. I am sincerely sorry, Daniela. You absolutely deserve to be number 18. Get Bwipo off of there. He was Dracos, out of there. Dracos, 19th you, you place. Bwipo. Oh, wait, no, 19th is Jazuke. 18th is Ignor. 18th is Ignor. <laughs> Oh my god, you're trolling! <laughs> Up until this point, people might have given me a shred Dracos, of Dracos, 18th place. Ignar. There we go. Double I, double I, Frosco. 19, Jazuke. Dracos, number 19, Jazuke. Froskurin, 17th place. Alfari. Indiana Blacks, 18th place. Reckless. I kind of butchered that one. It was a tongue twister. Indiana Blacks. Frost Curran's 19th place. Hans Sama. You made your list? Oh, we are going to have words. Okay. All right. Hold on. You erase this. <laughs> Jitsuki didn't even make your list. Because I forgot about him. Okay. Don't Here's the thing, me. real talk. So the only two teams that are not represented on my list are Excel and Rogue. Again, shout out Expect to Cadrill. Sorry, guys. Uh, originally, when I did the list, Misfits weren't on it as well. Wait, did you just shout out two, two Excel players and not a single Rogue player? No. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know the score. Leave it. <laughs> Pray for Larson. <laughs> anyway, continue. Shout out to Kickis. Ooh, Rip. Too soon. Okay. Misfits. There is no way that you can do a top 20 list and not have any Misfits members. And you I understand. You rated them eighth coming into the split. And I understand that they finished eighth in the split. And that's definitely what's going to hurt them. But I think that that was the cluster, excuse me, cluster fiddlesticks that was whatever happened on Misfits. We're just going to give them that one, even though that seems to keep happening to them where they that, start. Song. Okay. That's the point I want to make. <laughs> this keeps no, happening. Stop. No, give me two I'm seconds. Not done. I got a no, okay. okay. Fine. You go. No, okay. Fine. Finish. So my thing was, is then I was like, okay. You know, I'll throw a bone to the Misfits. I think if you took any of those players, put them on a different team, you'd probably see a lot of success. And a lot of people would then go, so as, it's your time to shine. To which I'm like, yeah, I actually had the debate between putting Paul there or putting Hansama. But then I was like, I actually think Bwipo is the better top laner. So I have so as on my list because I'm trying to throw a bone to Misfits. That doesn't feel good for Bwipo because, again, we talked about the, the diversity of being able to play like the carries and that it just didn't really fit for Soaz's meta. If meta shifts back, boom. Soaz, you're right back on the list. Thank you, Paul. Go read the, what was it? The Player's Lobby. Dear it was Paul. so beautiful. It was very well written. So I was like, Players who do I put there? And I grabbed Hansama. And the thing about Hansama is that he basically dictated what the bot lane meta was going to be. He had such a crazy big impact on the first beginning of the split in the LEC. And when they gave him resources, he did manage to pop off. So I felt that Hansama, out of all the Misfits players, was going to be the guy that I was going to grab hold of. And he was in a very competitive role because I felt like ADC and bot lanes were the most competitive of the LEC that they've ever been. Whereas we talked about the gap between like top three mid laners and then it's a massive gap. Top three top laners, massive gap. I feel like jungle ADC hyper competitive. And so wanted to give a shout out for Han Sama. That's why he's on my list. I love you. So here's my deal with Misfits, right? And it's twofold. We'll talk about my opinion on Misfits, the, the org and in this lineup. Misfits are, to me, very similar to CLG, but there's one key difference. While CLG objectively makes the wrong choice every time, like they get rid of Darshan, <laughs> like you guys are actually trolling and you know it. Let's be clear here. Um, and I think most people know it at this there's point. No and once again, way. I say this as a diehard CLG fan. I was on board for every step of the way. I worked with Nian when he was a top laner. Wonderful dude. CLG, you're trolling. I don't know how you keep messing it up, but you do. Misfits, on the other hand, on paper, keep making the right choices, and they keep going horribly <laughs> wrong, and I don't understand why. And so that's why I think they're similar. But they brought in Moose V back. They brought in the coach. Dad's going to yes. take off his belt. He's going to sure. fix everything. And then that's what I would always assume, and that's what I assume every split, and then things go great, and then they crash and they burn. And that's the story. And now let's take a look at Daniel Dracos' pile of rejections from the top 20. We have a lot of players. So as... He was close. And honestly, Hansama was close too. But I look at it, and I don't have a lot of faith, 
right now in Misfits. And I think rightfully so when they've tanked so hard. Now, I think that Soaz and Hansama are both excellent players, but I also think that Hansama defining the bot lane meta. He played Draven again. He's always played Draven. It's nothing new. It's not consistent. It's not special. And Paul, as good and consistent as he was supposed to be, was horribly inconsistent. And yes, Gorilla wasn't great when he came in. By the way, you guys put Gorilla number four. You're, You're trolling. trolling. He was actually running it down in most of those Tom Kench games. I really he, hope like, he He makes direct up. eye contact with the enemy jungler on bot side. Then he's like, then, time like, to go all in, in on Alistar yeah. and then dies to Olaf. You're like, what are you doing? Yeah, and... Uh, I'm just not, I'm not gonna give them that benefit of the doubt. No, no Misfits players show up on my list because I just have no reason to believe in Misfits anymore. And Hansama is still a good AD carry, but also he goes from great AD carry, getting all this attention, to invisible for the rest of the split. If we saw that start of the split Misfits for the entire split, I'd be like, hell yeah, Froskarin. Hansama, he might even be like number 10 or something. He might even be super way up there, but they just like, they just Since disappear. we're also sh in all of Misfits, um I just want to say, if you go back and check statistically who is the best performing member of Misfits, a lot of the answers will pop up into Febivin. Now, that said, when you have such incredible playmaking mid laners in our top three, such as the likes of Caps, who is really just defining what mid lane means for Europe, um, Febivin is more of like a dominoes are set up and then you push them over type of guy. I didn't feel like his performance was personally setting up the dominoes. And so while his stats look good because he's playing a lot of things like the Rise, I feel like if you give that Rise to any other mid laner, it looks a lot more oppressive. So Febivin, I guess, did his job, but I. I wanted extra credit, and that's kind of why I put, again, Hansama over Febivin, because I felt there like if there was, if there was really ever a, a, a hard <laughs> carry, it was the guy who went for the extra credit. Um, but if you check the stats, Febivin, I'm pretty sure, has ridiculous, or probably the most consistent stats over uh, anyone on Misfits. Yeah. And so, once again, history, history for me docks Misfits, because it has been, once again, a series of roster changes that, on paper, should make their team better that don't. But if you take any of those players and you put them into a different team, they probably look great. But they're not on a different team, so I'm not I'm not giving them that benefit of the doubt, um, and that's just not the situation we're in. So you're right. If this was the NFL draft, you're right. They might like I might rate them higher as far as draft picks go, but I would not put these this whatever is happening on misfits together. Again. I just think it's about expelling that myth that um, it's hard because we have G two in our league, where the best player in every role is always on the best team. Yep. Because that, for the history of League of Legends has almost never been true. G2, unfortunately, might break that. Same thing with like someone like Invictus Gaming in certain positions. But you know, it's it's the idea that just because a team comes first doesn't mean that they have the greatest top laner in the league. Oh, Why yeah. is Ignar on your list? Playmakers, do it for me. I believe in Ignar. Yeah, well, he dropped off a cliff for half the split. Yeah, but I... I'm going to put that one on Memento uh, more than I'm going to put that one on Ignar. And maybe that's wrong. But I actually have a ton of faith in Ignar to come back and continue to be a playmaker. Because I had no faith in him coming into the split. Absolutely none. I, I think didn't think I, that was going to work. I only had two players on my list that didn't make playoffs. An upset and Hansama. I had Ignar and uh, upset. So you did the Shulka bot lane. Yeah, the Shulka, I really think the Shulka bot lane is going to be insane. I guess that's With fair. a new jungler. Um, 19 is Jizuke. Obviously, it was originally Blippo, and I forgot. Uh, Blippo was originally on the list because it was like, ah, he's pretty good. You and know? then you killed him. And honestly, once I got past, like, I'm, I find once it I get past 17, it's honestly like, oh, God, who do I put on the list? Not because there's so many options, but because it's like, it feels bad to say this guy's top 20. That's honestly what my list feels like. And so, Jizuke is 19 is, is unfortunate, but is the reality. Jizuke did not have a good second half of the split. There are health issues. There are some intangibles there that I hope have been corrected going into the split, but will not just put him on the top immediately and give the benefit of the doubt. Especially, while he has been insane, I don't... I'm scared for Vitality. I, I think they are refreshed. I'm going to take the Shalka bot lane approach where it's like, everything is better now. Yamato took the blame for Vitality, and Vitality are going to run full head first, and they're going to... They're going to make it Destroy go everyone. for it. Yes, and I think I will take the other side of that bet, which is I think this is this is the deciding split for Vitality. I will agree. This is either the crash and burn and everything falls to pieces split, or this is the rise like a phoenix and mess some kids up and talk a lot of trash. Well, trash will be docked either way, probably. Number 20. Number 20. Dracos, right. 20th place. Trick. 2G. No. The good old trick. Two times MVP trick. G2 trick. BBQ trick. Frost current. 20th place. 20th place? 
20th place. Frost Gurren's 20th place, Nemesis. I'm gonna be honest right now. You picking Nemesis as your 20th is so, is so absolutely cool. You big trick! Because the third piece of paper in my, in my, in my rejection folder is Nemesis. Because <laughs> I knew he was going to show up somewhere on the list. Nemesis is good, but he's not top 20 worthy. What's your argument here? Um, okay, so I think it's easier to then look at the people that you would probably put on the list over Nemesis. So Whippo, Soaz, is there anyone else? Trick. Apparently Ignar. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe someone wants to give a shout out to Gorilla. Apparently. No, that's wrong. Cross that out and put Dreams. <laughs> oh, Dreams was also- Dreams was no, good. No, this is actually Norse Garen. Um, oh, Norse Garen's good too. So when I originally did the list, I had Norse Garen here, but- Sit and talk. Sit oh, and talk. sorry. So it went between three. What I was going for was I had Whippo, Nor uh, Soaz, and Norse Garen, and then like Nemesis. And these were the four that I was going for for, for my final 20th. Um, I ended up on Nemesis because I felt like a Fnatic uh, made an incredible run, and mm -hmm. I went back and I watched a lot of the early games, and Nemesis was never really the problem, in my opinion. Um, I felt like there wasn't exactly the synergy, but he had things like he solo killed uh, Jizuke when he played the Galio into the Aurelia. Yes, what he went down a bunch of CS. He went down so much CS. I understand, but he was roaming, and it checks out when he made the play. Like, it wasn't perfect. There were some holes, but yep. I don't think he was ever the problem for Fnatic. He definitely turned into a massive um, core and, like, consistent member when they yeah. did start performing. Playing Lissandra for the Reckless show. That's fine. <laughs> Avatake basically made a career off of just playing Lissandra for the Upset show. Hey, he made a career off of going for hyphy plays, getting a single kill, staying too long, and, <laughs> and then the dying. dying to the tower. Okay. <laughs> uh, and looking at it, I almost kind of wish that I had done or Norse Garen because I really wanted to give like Splice like their due diligence, but Fnatic ultimately finished higher than them. Um, I think Nemesis is still my guy to watch. I think Norse Garen's going to take a little bit more time to ramp up. And going into the split right now, I think that Nemesis will be a more hyphy performing member than someone like Norse Garen. When I originally had Norse Garen there, I was thinking about all the sick, like, unsealed Spellbook Braum plays where he goes over the wall, he steals the dragon, he pieces out. Norse Garen like, is hyphy. For sure. Yeah. But he's so inconsistent. Like, to me, yep. Norse Garen's hyphy games are like 1 in 10, which makes me sad. Because when he is hyphy, it's like, it's crazy to watch. You saw it a lot more on Rogue Cat. Rock Cat. <laughs> Rogue, Rogue Cat. Rock Cat. Rock Cat. Uh, before. And I, I don't think we see it as much. Probably because he's on a much more stable team and doesn't have to be that person more. But. How do you flame I mean, You had trick there. Two time MVP. Two time. This man is coming back. Now, look. I was burned last season when I said Ignar was going to be, this is like the worst. I, I really was skeptical about Ignar coming back. The barbecue all over his boys. They're returning to Europe. But he did well. And recently, I, I, I have faith in Trick. When this guy was at his peak in Europe, it's all history. You know I'm not going to reference He didn't perform very well in the lesser region. And now he's coming back to the higher competition. He did better in the higher competition. <laughs> he was number it one. He was in higher competition He was, he was the number one jungler the way Caps is the number one mid laner in the sense that no one was even close to him. You put Yankos there, but it like didn't even feel right. This and guy who was, was he playing with? He was playing with Perks. Mm -hmm. Sven and Mithy. Who is he playing with now? He's playing with Ignar, other hype support, Upset, Abadage and Odawame. Is he a leader? Because that's what that team needs. Um, I don't know. I, I've I, don't know I watched scrims for that G2 lineup, and I'd say that Trick was not the number one voice. He was a good voice, though. He does actually speak a lot, but... I, I if he's know. a shot caller and if he's a leader, then I'm all aboard the shock of hype train. I think that's exactly what they need. They need, like, a really dominant voice. If he's not, then I don't think it makes a difference. I'm on the shock of hype train. Because I, I think the Trick is coming back in a big way. And also, so the most I couldn't put any of these people on the top 20 in good conscience, except for the ones that I did, like Ignore and, you know. Is there any, so the only player that I. Who, who's on this list that didn't make the list? That's what the, the final exercise before we close out for the day. These are our top 20s. Hit us up, talk to us about them. Um, oh wait, no, you can only at me if you start and open every conversation with pineapple is the best. Pineapple, because, what? Yeah, pineapple is the best. Period. Yeah. And then talk. Because otherwise, you didn't listen to the podcast, and I don't care about your opinion. That's true. I don't really want to just get blatantly flamed when people aren't listening. Because I know the list will go up, and people will just whatever, and be like, "Oh, That's how true. dare they sh and say that this guy's a piece of shit?" I never said that. They're all amazing. They're top twenty players in the best region Agreed. in the world. 
the garbage can was purely for comedic effect. They're all great players. All good people. Everyone deserves a trophy. Participation award. I know. Um, <laughs> so, support list, interestingly. Mickey Hill is saying Mithy, Gorilla Ignar. Once again, this is publicly voted. You can pick any of the five uh, players that were starting or likely to start. And put I would them put in. Ignar over Gorilla. I'd 100% put Ignar over Gorilla. You guys are trolling in that regard. Um, otherwise, I would put Norskaren over both of them. I would put Ignar, but Norskaren would be my five. Yeah. Hands down. Um, Otherwise, the list I'd say is pretty good. Fevin shows up here a lot, which I don't... Nemesis is also higher than Jazuke. Which is actually insane to me. Yep. But to be... that Recency bias. There's a lot of Fanatic recency fans. Recency bias. Oh. Fanatic fandom, also probably possible. But recency bias definitely could be a thing there, too, because Nemesis had a better second half than Jazuke. What's cool is there's actually an old school rival rivalry, we'll use that word lightly, uh, between Nemesis and Jazuke. They played in the Spanish League together. Super League Orange. Super League of Orange together. Time, huh? uh, every time that they meet... Sh- Goes down in that mid lane. There's always blood. They always are solo killing each other. So I actually think to it. I'm not saying that they hate each other or anything, but I think that there's something cool to build there that they both kind of started from the same spot and they continue to be on this uh, meteoric rise. Cool. Uh, this has been our list. If you guys want to check out the top five, the public voting, uh, you can do so at lolesports.com. Wonderful list voted for by you, the public. Uh, you can check out the full results. Um, super cool list. Unlike last time, they weren't limited to the top three. You got to pick anyone you want into the top five. So Really cool. Uh, no surprise that Caps was the overall winner. Did First. Fnatic get second and everything? Oh, my goodness. Fnatic, which <laughs> it's kind of a slide to OG, but shout out to the Fnatic fans out there. You guys are really making the difference. Um, <laughs> and otherwise, this has been episode one of Euphoria. I would like to thank Yamato uh, for his contributions, and we have a special Yamato ending to send us off. And that's the end of that chapter. I hope the quality was good. Enjoy your episode. Much love from my apartment enjoy your episode I'm looking forward to the mid-season sumo invitational or whatever it's gonna come my way because I'm gonna keep my trophy peace also looking forward for the invitation for when I'm going to do my episode see ya <laughs> alright thank you Jacob that has been uh, season 1 episode 1 we'll talk about the second annual mid-season invitational sumo invitational at some other point um it's it has to be bigger and better but we don't know how so we'll see you next time we're the best